Welcome to Y'all Must Forgot, the show where we give flowers to the players who don't get the love they deserve. I'm your host, LeJethro Jenkins. I fell in love with the game watching players like Nick the Quick, who made the game seem bigger than the sport. He made basketball look like art, like a form of expression. He buried his soul with the basketball in his hands. Today's guest did the same, but in a little different way. Instead of using the basketball like a paintbrush, he used it like a mallet. One of the best defensive players of his time, number one pick in the 2000 NBA Draft and 2004 NBA All-Star, Kenyon Martin, a.k.a. Kmart. When talking Kenyon, the first thing that comes to mind is his ferocity. And there's a lot of people that play with ferocity, but his was a little different. It wasn't about the effort and heart. It was much more than that. He played basketball with a loud, almost tangible hunger. He didn't play the game like he was playing a game. It seemed to matter too much for it to be just a game. He played basketball like it was combat. And I don't say this to diminish any of his skills or talent that he displayed throughout his years on both ends of the court. But what I remember most when watching Kmart is that it looked painful to play against him, physically and psychologically. Much of the foundation to his approach comes from how he grew up, but it was molded and stamped during his time in Cincinnati. When I came in to Cincinnati my freshman year, we was the number one team in the country. Okay, right? okay. Uh, Danny Forrest, yep, Damian yep. Flint, Darnell Burden, uh, that squad, Ruben Patterson was coming in, <sighs> Melvin Levitt. Like we had Melvin a squad, Levitt, right? Melvin Levitt, yeah. So on that team, I went from playing barely and averaging three and a half points as a freshman. Okay. And Hug just let me be me from day one. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, from, like when I say from day one, like he let me be me in every sense of the word. Like right, he didn't right. change me, just helped me get better. Just told me what I needed to do to get better at the skill set of basketball. Man, I listened, I locked in. And I like like to your point, like I was I was his ideal basketball player. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, smart, everything you got. Smart, yeah, yeah. play hard, athletic, tough as nails, don't take no shit. Right. And I was him. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was him. Like on the floor, like right. so he let me be me, man, and the rest is is that. You know what I'm saying? From doing averaging three and a half points, shooting thirty percent from the free throw line as a freshman Damn. to yeah. being the consensus national player of the year and the number one pick, man. Right, 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 you know right. So that's come on, man. Talk about them hugs practices. When that man let me be me, like my freshman year, man. Like I just got eligible. So I found out I got eligible on my birthday, my freshman year. Mm -hmm. I was still taking the SAT. I was enrolled in school. One of my first few practices, loose ball. Mm -hmm. A practice, wow, right? I'm a freshman. Right, right. Loose ball, starting center on the team, senior. Push me. I ain't used to that. Like he pushed me and right, I skin right. my hand, knees on the floor, hand oh, yeah, knee, yeah, knee, yeah. on the floor, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know them floor burns on yeah, your knees and your yeah, hand yeah. raw, right? Yeah. So my natural reaction is to hop up, like, what the fuck you doing, man? Right, right, right. And he threw his hands up at me. Like the squirrel? Yeah. Oh. I'm a freshman. I didn't know. Like, this is one of my first few practices. Okay, okay. So obviously this is allowed okay. when he <laughs> threw his hands yeah, up. Yeah, you knew what time it was then. Yeah. And I, he didn't know. You said thank you when he squared off. Oh, man. Listen, him, right? Man, he put his hands up, but not high enough. <laughs> Listen, Jack, man, I think, think, ba boom, boom, boom. I must have punched him five, six, seven times, dog. How, how long did it take for them to get in and break y'all no, up, man? No, they hugs told him, God damn it, Jackson, protect yourself. <laughs> he wanted to work on defensive drills. You Listen, know what told him this, told this boy to protect himself. Right, right, damn. I mean, and when he didn't break it up, that told me everything I need to know. Right, right. I'm a freshman. Mm -hmm. Dunk shit, block shit, fight shit. The mantra. He was good at them all. But the first part, dunking shit, only one player during this time did it better, and that was Vince. Outside of that, it was Kmart. Nobody wanted to see him at the rim, period. His years with Jason Kidd are the original Lob City. It truly seemed as if there wasn't a place inside of the entire arena you could put a basketball where he couldn't go get it. And I am certain that Kidd tried, throwing the ball to impossible places just to see what Kmart would do or could do. If it was within the rules, I guarantee he would have tossed a few lobs off the scoreboard just for the vibes. The two were created to play with one another and meshed perfectly. Their chemistry was a type that normally takes years to build. But according to Kenyon, they were locked in from day one. Just worked. 
Yeah. Man, just he was veteran in this. I'm I'm young. I'm in my second year. And you was a dog though, bro. You was you was you know what I'm saying. But J Kid, it was the spin lobs and teaching like telling like when I, you walk him up, spin out. Like bet. And the first time mm-hmm. I did, and it was ball was right on time. <laughs> And then it became a staple. Like literally, a grown NBA player standing right in front of yeah. me, you just throw it by the rim. Like you do know he looking at you throw this ball, right? <laughs> right. But he just throw it up there and jump with me when the ball come close. He throw it in as soon as he he'll jump with me to make like. And, and if I couldn't dunk it, I'm gonna come down with for it. Sure. Like, I'm gonna win that. You gonna go 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 get it? And, for and, sure. and then he knew that. Yeah. And then he wasn't afraid to turn the ball over neither. So that's the like that's the beauty of great passers. Mm-hmm. Like they're gonna try it and. If it don't get there, then, ah, yeah, it ain't. You know what I'm saying? Some things are good thoughts and might not be the best decision. But yeah. if you have a guy that can go get that thing, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah. try. You oh, there's things, man. We playing Philly. He went baseline. He was getting shoot, getting ready to shoot a reverse layup. We in Philly. He see me coming down the middle of the lane. He just in the last minute decided I'm not gonna shoot the reverse because a few guys jumped mm-hmm. and he threw the ball out the front of the rim. Mm-hmm. Like, dude. What is like, you doing? Like we are, <laughs> and the first time he threw it off the glass on the break, I was yeah, like, yeah. "Oh, this dude crazy." Let's be honest. The first four years, man, with J Kid, them three years with J Kid, like I, was, I was giving the league hell. Mm. You know what I'm saying, running plays for me, doing the whole. Like I'm saying, so I was yeah. giving folks hell. Right. That chemistry led to the finals two years back to back. The first year, they came up on the final year of the Shaq Kobe Lakers dynasty. Year two. He went up against Tim Duncan Spurs. He made it to the promised land twice and battled it out with not just the gods of the NBA, the gods amongst the gods. Shaq, TD, and Kobe are top 10 players all time. They will be Hall of Famers in the NBA league that only consisted of Hall of Famers and showed out in front of the world. Against the Lakers, he was the third highest scorer in the series behind Shaq and Kobe, averaging 22 points per game in only his second year in the league. When the bright lights were at their brightest, he just put on his shades and went to work. The badass yellow boy from Oak Cliff had a ride. So we playing them guys, they just won it. Like they, like them guys. Yeah, that, they won it twice before yeah, you had it, right? Yeah. yeah, so it's like, I'm like, yo, let's. But yeah, they didn't, yeah, we was ready. I was ready, we was ready, but yeah, mm-hmm. they was just a better team. Did you, but going yeah. into it, did you feel like, you know, that was a really, really good squad? Yeah, yeah, they had it like, yeah. of course they had the advantage at the five. Of course, Kobe was who Kobe he was, was you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But other than them, they had a solid team. We had the advantage at the one. We had mm-hmm. the advantage at the four. Mm-hmm. So, I was RJ. cooking Ori, bro. Huh? Cook oh, Ori. I was cooking. Oh, yeah, I was oh, cooking. Oh, right. man. Oh, bro, I'm oh, like, why they put in there? I was cooking. Like, Anybody they put in front of me, then, yeah, it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a toll to pay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely a toll to pay. Now, I was, yeah, yeah no, nah, I just didn't know no better. Yeah. Probably, that's probably what it was. Yeah, but the average 22 in the finals your second year. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty good, man. Yeah. That's pretty good. What's then, one thing you then, remember? Then, like, people right. hear 22 points and think of today's scoring, probably. Yeah. We're talking about 2003, 2002. Right, right. 2002. I think you know games was like, what, 88? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you win a saying? game so scoring 88. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? You, yeah. you, you scoring shit, a quarter of your team's points. Right, right. I'm saying? Right, with a squad you had. Yeah, though. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but yeah, nah, people like, hey, he, he bragging on average 22 of the finals. Right. Like, nah, that was decent back for that. There's that picture too where it shows uh, all, all of us, all yeah, five of us yeah, in the front. Yeah, y'all versus Shaq, you feel me? That, that picture is an indication of how the series was. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you had to like, like how, how'd the series go? You show somebody one picture. Cause I'm thinking he finna cock it, so I'm yeah. swipe, I'm coming, I'm thinking I'm finna, he yeah, just yeah. rooming that thing. I'm like, yo, we all five of us in the pitch. I was like, yo, man. Tim had one of the single best statistical lines in the finals. Yeah. Tim forced me to be a certain player and playing in the finals, you know what I'm saying? I think we could have, we split in San Antonio, game one and two. This one, it was the, 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 the format was two, three, two. Okay, okay. Yeah, so you so, two, you go play three. Yeah, yeah so, so. so we split in San Antonio, games one and two. They come back and win game three. We win game four. If we win game five, it's a different series. For sure, for sure. We go down uh, up a game. Mm-hmm. So now we got two games. We got, mm-hmm. we put, now, now, now we you really- playing with house money at that point. Now we playing with house you money. You feel me, yeah. But they got game five, so it was, 
and they closed out in six. It was definitely a great experience playing against Shaq and Kobe and the Lakers and that team, man, and, and then the dynasty that San Antonio became. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So not to say that you get anything for coming in second, but it was. I mean, you played, yeah. you went against them ones, bro. Yeah, so you know no, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, and I just always tried to show up. The most successful team he played on was the Nets, but I believe the best team he played on was the Nuggets. That 2008 team was a fucking problem. They had a squad, okay? Melo, Kenyon, Chauncey, J.R. Smith, Birdman, Nene. Top to bottom, talent-wise, this team had a real chance to do something special and get what eluded him in New Jersey, a chip. If they got past that Lakers team, you could have went ahead and printed the T-shirts because that was a series that decided it all. It was a really tight series. And I'm certain at times, they could smell that damn Larry O'Brien trophy. Taking Kobe and Powell to the brink, and if we keep it all the way a buck, would have probably pulled it off if they had a serviceable coach. We had a better team than them, and they knew it. They just had an equalizer in Kobe. Mm -hmm. um, it's all solid, solid, yeah. Solid players, yeah. I'm saying, across the board. But yeah, nah, it's, it's little situations, man, throughout a game and throughout a series that needs to happen. Yeah. And we weren't getting that. I used to tell this boy, we was coming out, I got Bean. He like, no, I got him. Like, no, you can't get in foul trouble, fool. Like, no, I got him, I got him. Like, no, bro. You, man, I got, no, I got him. And he just roughing him up and they just letting him get away with it. And, but now they, no, it was that, man. Two great competitors, two great scores mm -hmm. going at it. Um, yeah, it's just unfortunate that we, Certain aspects of the game, for sure, like for we sure. were lacking. And, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, and they took advantage of it. But nah, man, it was a great series, man. But nah, and then, yeah, we would have, yeah, we would smacked Orlando. First time I looked at that Nuggets roster, I thought that locker room had to be crazy. And according to Kenyon, it was crazier. So I was hurt, knee knee situation more than likely. Mm -hmm. um, didn't play. Had on a suit. Empty my pockets, put my keys and wallet, all that in my mm -hmm. locker. Yeah. So April Fool's, him, a few other guys earlier that day. Good, good laugh moment. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ha ha ha, key, key, key. Think the shit over, right? <laughs> right. I go to the go game start later on that day. Game over, bring it in. I right, one, two, three nuggets. Right, right. I go to the car. <laughs> right. I get in the car. I, I go yeah. to the car. I, I, like I'm diligent about locking my car. I'm just certain things I'm on point about. Mm -hmm. I lock my car. I hit the unlock button and it don't chirp, unlock. No, no, I'm thinking that's that's peculiar. <laughs> I hit the door and popcorn just rush out my car. So I go back in the locker room. I'm going ape shit crazy. You're right. Right? I'm challenging everybody. What the fuck? Da, 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 da. So there's a camera outside the locker room door. Okay. There's a camera outside the locker room door. I need to know who was in this motherfucker doing the game. And oh. I'm on my way home. And I need to foot. I need to know this by the time I get home. Okay. Okay. By the damn show. By the time I pull up in my place, they we know who was in the locker room. Okay. We know who we. So they call the little boy, boy, his name Laquan. They call Laquan. He's he right right away. Yeah, yeah. He snitch on Jr. off top. <laughs> I mean, a ball boy, man. This is snitch off. Right, but you, so right. he's trying he to run around and that. hang out with Jr. All this shit, right? Yeah, yeah. He's trying to hang out with him. Yeah. He's Jr. Little driver, whatever you want to be, whatever he want to call him at the time. What he was, but yeah. yeah so he put him up to it, right? Yeah. yeah. So now I, you know who it is. Yeah. Now I need let Jr's address. No, Ken, please. I need his address. <laughs> no, Ken, please. I need his address. What you, man? Damn all that, man. Y'all know what it is, man. I ain't going da da da. So, close friend of mine to this day used to work for the team. We lived in the same building at the time. They calling him. Can you please go talk to him? Can right, 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 right. Like, like everybody. Yeah. Or, or, on the sun, GM, you had everybody. to get your issue, man. You was already everybody. there mentally, Listen, right? Everybody, right. like, yo, you please, you please don't do this. <laughs> like they, they, they trying to talk. So you on it real smoke? Oh yeah, yeah. I was on yeah. It. It's a good thing they didn't. Yeah, cause yeah. I probably would did something irrational. Okay. <laughs> no, at the, you know, people don't understand how like. Uh, why? I think I'm, I'm different, man. Okay. I'm, I, I done came a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't yeah. never claimed to be no tough guy, none of this shit, but I'm just, when put in certain situations, yeah. my reaction ain't gonna be your reaction. Okay. Yeah. Like, you punch me in my chest, I'm gonna punch you in your face. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense, though. <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, I hear what you mean, though. That's just yeah, what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. That's just what, like, you punch yeah. me much, I'm going to punch you in your face. Yeah, right, right. And I might you hit you twice. Face, I'm going to beat you. And, and I might hit you twice. Right, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. just who I am. Right, right. That's what it is. So therefore, I was going to take it all the way there. Can I ask you, man, what, what type of car was it? It was a Range Rover. Okay, yeah. Range Rover light interior. You had to have them. So yeah, no, yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it adds up, bro. So then and I it told- had the ribbon on it too, uh, you remember? Uh, yeah, the then, ribbon yeah, in the yeah, car. Oh yeah, 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 bro. Then I threatened yeah. the ball boy's life. I told him- The ball boy? Oh, he, he not allowed in the Pepsi Center at what? the time. You got a monitor? Listen, if I see him in here, I'm gonna hurt him. And I told him straight up, if you see me around Denver, Colorado, you go the other way. If I see was he from anywhere, Denver? Yeah. So he wasn't even built for none of this nah, right here. Nah, man, he, 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 JR didn't put this boy in harm's way. <laughs> Himself and him. Right. Son? Yeah, that's how you get in the how stolen did car. How y'all squash this, Oh, though? the team got the car reupholstered and all yeah, that. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so it was, but nah, it was just the principle of it. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. It was, it was, and everybody, the question that everybody had was, like, why him? Like, you know how this nut is. You know how he is. They are real crazy to like, be trying that. They, you know how he is. Yeah, yeah. And people, and everybody was just like, yo, why him? The fact that Kenyon Martin was only selected to one all-star team is hard to believe. I checked like three different sites to make sure I wasn't tweaking. Even called a few homies, and all of them were just as confused. Real Mandela effect type shit. We all remember him to be much bigger and more prominent than basketball reference would say. And you could say that's us misremembering, but Kmart was one of those players whose greatness resonated more within culture than the confines of the game. He got his in the trenches getting dirty, but not because he had to. He was skilled and talented as hell. He played in the trenches because that's where he was most comfortable. That's where he wanted to get it. Regardless of ability, those players hardly ever get the love they deserve. Kmart is proof of that. He may have only had one all-star selection, but he had a good time based on the story about St. Louis's own Cedric the Entertainer. Said the Entertainer talking about, look at these niggas. <laughs> what? <laughs> we was at the Players Association party. from St. Louis too, Cedric from we was, St. Louis. We was at this Players Association party. Yeah, yeah. He walked by, said like, look at these niggas. <laughs> Uh, we each had like three bottles of champagne, three or four. We probably had four bottles a piece. Right. Like me and my partners. Because we had the players show and we had to buy tickets to get the liquor. And we're like, I'm not finna keep going back to the bar. Right. I'm like, how much of that, man? We got, I don't know how many tickets we had. I just gave like, all of them. It was like me and like five of my partners. And we all had like four bottles of champagne a piece. Walking to the little section they had for us. And said, walk by like, yo, look at these niggas. And he made it in the full definition of absolute, the word. Too. Absolutely, because we was he def- for sure did it. That was and definitely it we was sense. in that moment. We was six niggas walking. He was by. Am- he was amazed at your That's, nigga though. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, hey, that is. Look he was, at these. He niggas. was right on point. Look at <laughs> these niggas. And it, I laughed my ass off because he was right on point too. Cause just could you imagine you seeing six niggas walk by each time got Big, four, like, yo, four bottles players, of champagne. Right. Now they weren't even NBA dudes, yeah, yeah. it's my partners. Okay, the homies, okay. It was my, my homies. That makes it actually funnier you thinking you know about it. It's my homies. <laughs> and we each walked by, got four bottles of champagne. I think I had like a bottle of champagne in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's how big the clothes Going was back then, of right course. Him. Yes, the lack of all-star selections was shocking, but the fact that he was never selected to an all-defensive team is flat-out inexcusable. If there is any place a player who approached the game the way he did is supposed to be celebrated, it's in these selections. The dunks put asses in the seats, but where he really planted his flag was on the defensive end, standing across from the best player on the opposite team every night. He guarded one through five, which meant one night he was looking up at Tim Duncan, and the next night he was looking down at Kobe. One day he's chasing Allen Iverson, another he's chasing Reggie Miller. He guarded everybody, and it didn't matter who you were. He was bringing that smoke. Him not getting an all defensive selection is a smudge on the game. It makes a lie out of whatever metric is used to decide the winners. It's wrong and he hates it. If anything bothers me over my career, that's one of them. That is one of the single things that bothered me. You ask anybody, man, any coach, any player on my team opposing. Bruh. Yeah. I mean, every night we knew what you're going to get from you watching you as a fan. You know what I'm saying? And them dudes who put them on one shoe at a time. Right, right. Everybody knew. Oh, this is going to be one tonight. I guarded everybody, bruh. Man, there came out of timeouts when I was with the Nets where I'm, I'm chasing AI around. 
You go to AI? Man, I, man, listen, so you could go out one through five, basically, is what you're trying to. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even. <laughs> like, man, listen, everybody except him. Okay. So it's probably, uh, you, did everybody you. Everybody except him. Did, you could go out to everybody, so Shaq was the one. He's the same guy, I'm too, I'm well enough. Okay, okay. I'm 6'9", he's 7'2". Yeah. I'm three, at the time, three, three, I'm two and a quarter. Yeah. Two, between 225 and 230 I'm playing at. Yeah. Was he? Like, he's 100 he? pounds more than me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what yeah. I'm going to do? Yeah. Got great hands, got good feet, I'm strong. Yeah. I ain't that strong. I'm saying to stop him from going where he want to. I can play games, pull a chair at times mm-hmm, and all mm-hmm. that stuff, but. But just overall, pure physicality, no, it's, you know it's, what I mean? It, it ain't going to happen. It, it just was, wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, man, no, nah, I just guarding a guy like Dirk, then switching to pick and rolls, him and Jason Terry, and then depends on who guarding um, Jose, J.J. Barrera, and mm-hmm. switching that, or we playing New Orleans and CP and David West in the pick and roll, mm-hmm. or I'm guarding James Posey, and I got to switch on, and then it's young in my career, we playing Indiana, and I got to chase Jalen and Reggie around. And, yeah. Then go bang down low with J.O. Right, right, right. He was everywhere. Everywhere with it. You mm-hmm. feel Why do you think you never won a uh, selection? Why do you think that was? Reputation, personal. People didn't like me. I was loud, dog. And the people that vote are the like the writers. Yeah, yeah. I probably didn't talk to him after the game. Yeah. Told him to kiss my ass Some. <laughs> that told, might do it. Told him I don't read, I don't read what you write. Right, no right. No damn way. <laughs> right. Something along those lines probably, but... No, nah, man, I but I but I but I showed up and I did it and them dudes knew. Mm-hmm. Some dudes I played against. Yeah, they had to they had to adjust mm-hmm. their approach for that night. I've always said I'm gonna lie to my kids about Jordan playing for the Wizards. Not because what he did wasn't amazing, but because the way he ended his time in Chicago was perfect. It was the way a player with his career was supposed to go out. Holding his follow through in the air as the ball caresses the net simultaneously, snatching the heart out of Utah. Beautiful and breathtaking, while also being callous and cold-blooded. That was MJ. Kmart had an up close and personal experience with his airness when the then 40 year old dropped a 40 ball on him. It's just exciting. You know what I'm saying? It is Michael Jordan still. Yeah. Even though it's not that Mike, but it's the still. The average 22 or yeah, 40, that's crazy. Mike. It's still Mike. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's still MJ. So the excitement of having to have the opportunity to was, mm-hmm. was there. So How'd I that was, game go? I was eager. We played against him a couple times. I think the first time, he probably took it personal. Why is that? Next time, because when he came to Jersey, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, we played him for the first time in Jersey when okay. he came back. And we hadn't sold out a home game. Mm-hmm. And his first game back, we sell, like first time he came to the Meadowlands, we sold out. Everybody pulling up for the MJ tour, you know what I mean? And we put up 74 in the first half. Oh, wow. And he don't play in the second half. Oh, so y'all shot Oh, yeah, we listen, man. We them. ran their ass out of there, dog. <laughs> And he don't, and they in that bitch booing. Right, right. Cause <laughs> booing he who? Because he don't play in the second half. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Why would you play? He came out yeah. with ice on. It's 40. He ain't trying to hoop. They down. <laughs> no, we had 74 at half. Okay. Back then? Yeah, yeah. That's insane. That's a game. That's, then that's, that's, that's the game. You could have won a game in 74 or something. 74 at me? half. Right. He didn't, so he didn't suit up. So I think he took it personal. Yeah. So next time he saw us, he was ready. Well, how much he dropped? One game he had 40. I don't oh, know if no. I played that game or if I did. Okay, you can okay. look it up. I don't know if I played in the 40-point yeah, yeah. game. Was you guarding? I guard some, yeah. Okay, footwork. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pump faking. I'm eager to jump. He had my ass out there hopping around. <laughs> I'm pump faking. me stepping through yeah. and all kind of shit. So, yeah, no, you trying to – yeah, you want to stop Mike. You want to say I strip Mike, I block right. him. Like, that's, I don't get what Mike it was. That's Mike. Mm-hmm. Wanna be a, you, you play against Mike? Yeah, I play against Mike. Right. I locked that shit down, too. You got to – yeah, that didn't happen. Because this is y'all must have forgot, I had to ask him what player would he say never received the love they deserve. I thought it would be a player whose game mimicked his or who he may have watched growing up. I was 1000% wrong, but he was 1000% right. This player dropped a 50 ball and is still slept on. I'm gonna go with Dre Miller. Yeah. I'm saying, cause no, Dre, Dre was like that, man. Yeah, yeah. Like Cleveland Dre, Denver Dre, Clipper Dre, Portland, no, Dre was like that, mm. man. Like underrated, like great, Floor general, point guard, worked on his game, wasn't pretty, mm-hmm. but was effective. Passed the hell out that ball, man. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Dre Miller, man. There's hard to find a player comparison when it comes to Kenyon Martin because he's truly one of one on and off the court. He's not a player whose impact on the game and culture can be truly understood through a Google search. You had to be there. 
And for those who were, he's impossible to forget. Y'all must have forgot Kenya Martin, but we showed it. 